How's it going today, folks? This is not a Let's Play. I know, shocker, right? This is instead a rambly video. Because I want to discuss about a game mechanic that I really like called Fight by Design. Now, Fight by Design is essentially a mechanic where... Yeah, obsolete tech, yeah. You essentially build your own units to adapt to ever-changing battlefield conditions, and it is a really cool mechanic. It honestly is. You basically select your body, you select your propulsion, you select your vehicle turret, and I haven't seen this done outside of, say, certain turn-based strategy games like Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri. That actually comes to mind. So, Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri is... A variant it has its own take on this obviously you basically build your you basically select the mode of transportation the armor and then the unit's weapon you can have foot infantry armed with artillery and there's all these complicated mechanics that go into it but i don't see it done outside of maybe one example which is a game called metal fatigue where you essentially build your own combat machines or your own mainline combat machines in that game it's robots in this game it's tanks which I think is a really... It's interesting. I do. I think that is genuinely interesting. And it kind of surprises me that more people don't do this. Like, you, you'd think with such an... That given how interesting this mechanic is, more devs would actually take advantage of being able to essentially give players creative freedom with how they fight their battles. But... The more I think on it, I can actually think of any number of reasons why this probably isn't done. Now, first things first, Fight by Design is, again, it's really cool, but it's also really complicated. Adds more moving parts. You have to create the interface, obviously. You have to debug it, create graphics for it. Just a whole bunch of stuff that a lot of devs probably don't want to have to go through the hassle of because it is honestly easier to balance a number of set units you know, have, balance your infantry, balance your artillery, balance your tanks, then letting the player essentially build or go ham. That's the way, best way I can put it. They can essentially letting the player go ham. And I can honestly understand why that might be. Just because you would have to do a shit ton of balancing. And we'll, we'll get into that in just a second. Now, one of the big we'll, we'll get into the pros and cons. We'll, we'll do the pros first. One of the biggest pros is the fact, obviously, you can adapt however you want. You want to build your Uber Tank 9000 with give it the heaviest body possible, give it the biggest, most powerful guns possible. Okay, go for it. Or you can build something really stupid, Zerg rush the enemy with a bunch of machine guns, or even better, take that super Uber heavy tank, base turn it into a slow moving bullet sponge armed with. A light machine gun and just soaking up all the damage which is honestly kind of fun it, it allows for a lot of creativity when it comes to how you fight your battles now it's not all peaches and cream obviously just because uh, what's, what's, what's the best way I, how, how's the best way i can phrase this Yeah, it's not gonna be it's not all peaches and cream when it comes to this sort of thing because obviously there's gonna be drawbacks. And again, it's usually just easier to balance set units or a single faction's units against another's. Now, bear in mind games like Command and Conquer, Total Annihilation, StarCraft, they work really well for this. But the fight by design approach is actually very unique is the best way I can put it. Oh boy, I had to, I know this is going to be a rambling video, folks, but I feel like I repeated myself a couple of times. Okay, okay. So first things first, why isn't this used more? Well, again, as pointed out, you obviously have the code for the interface. Now, you do have the options to save designs. Now, I don't know if these are map specific or if it's located for your player profile. I don't know. If Somebody who's been playing this game a while knows, let me know. But it's I, I don't I don't know. Unit under I, th I think one of the biggest other issues is 
again, I think I stated, as I've stated before, it's usually just easier to select or balance individual units versus, say, let's say for, let, okay, let's use one of the most primo examples of RTS balance, which is StarCraft. StarCraft is one of the best examples of a well-balanced game. Now, it, like all games, it's not perfect, okay? While they do have a good mixture of different units, balance, and each of the factions is balanced against the other, it's probably as close to a black box game as possible. Each unit has its uses. Everything is built for very specific situations. Every group has its own general purpose units. And the first game for the Zerg, it was the Hydralisk. For the Protoss, it was the Dragoon. And for the Terrans, it was the Marine. Good, solid choices for just about anything you can pretty much ask for. Now, I'm not going to say, again, it's nothing's perfect. It's honestly not. But at the same time... <laughs> Again, it's probably as close to perfect as you can get. And it's much easier to grant it. It's still time consuming. Anybody who's done even tabletop game design could tell you it is a time balance is a very time consuming process. And trying to make sure everything comes together in a certain way so nothing gets overshadowed is difficult. But not necessarily undoable. In fact, a good example of bad unit design would be Total Annihilation. I know, that may seem kind of odd, considering that is like one of my favorite games and one of the biggest games on the channel. You're right. But at the same time... At the same time, I'm not wrong. And the main reason I say this is because the arm and the core both have redundant units. So, a good example of this would be the Flash versus Peewee for the arm. Why build Peewees, which are, again, they are highly mobile, able to get up places easier because they're K-Bots, they can climb up steep hills, whatever, but they're not, they don't have a lot of armor. Why build those when you can build Flashes, which are tanks? Granted, they can't climb hills as well, but they're just a wee bit more durable and almost as cheap. Another example of this would be the Reaper versus Goliath for the core. These are advanced units. The Goliath is a super heavy tank armed with power, a very, very powerful cannon when uh, or lots of armor, very powerful gun, and granted, it's more expensive, but it builds faster, whereas the Reaper is, while well, yes, it's arguably one of the coolest looking units in Total Annihilation, it doesn't hit as hard, doesn't have as much armor, and although it's cheaper, it takes longer to build. Why, why would I build that when I can build this incredibly powerful, super heavy tank? Well, that's a, it's an example of bad design. Sure, I use the Reaper when I, my economy isn't set up to produce Goliaths, which is a great way to use it, but you're not going to get much use out of... Oh, shit, they're sending mortars at me now. Again, you're not going to get much use out of something like that when you have this X better option. Now, I'm not saying it's perfect. No game is perfect. But that that's an example of bad game design. Oh, shit, I forgot what I was going to... Oh, yeah. Get back on topic, Farsi, because you're talking about fight by design. So... Actually, no, that actually is related to Fight by Design, because Fight by Design would give you the option to essentially, rather than building redundant units, which in earlier versions, it's with Total Annihilation being open source and all that, in earlier versions, there were indeed redundancies built, or, yeah. God damn it. Well, anyways. <clears throat> Excuse me. Back on topic. Oh, hey, look, they're coming back for another round. All right, um, shit, I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, this would prevent those redundancies because players would obviously, they would have the option to upgrade their technology tree, which you can do right here. It actually allows for a very rich and extensive technology tree, which is actually really fucking cool, by the way. Major research 
Oh, wait, I don't have any half tracks. Okay, well, you know, we'll hold off on that. We'll hold off on that. Mm-hmm. Beam Cannon, thank you very much. Anywho. But yeah, it allows you to avoid those redundancies. It allows you to essentially fight the way you want to fight without being... I guess force into a very specific play style. Let's you want to go. You want to build machine gun units. Build machine gun units. Drown your enemies in a wall. Let you want to hammer the enemy with artillery. Go right on ahead. Research artillery. Drop the hammer on anything that moves. You want to burn the hell out of everything. You want to burn the land. Leave a scorched wasteland. Flamer it up. You want a hail of missiles. Hit enemies from afar. Go right on ahead. But. At the same time, again, the aforementioned interface, I did recall this, you gotta basically balance that. You have to find a way to balance, I wanna say... God damn it, I lost my train of thought again. Choo-choo! The train of thought left the station! <laughs> oh yeah. You have to find ways to keep players from abusing the hell out of certain strategies. Which, how do you do this? How do you balance it? How do you... Another thing, you, how do you keep the enemies... Or not enemies. Players from reaching the most powerful weapon available. Well, Metal Fatigue had you basically build certain structures so you get access to new combat parts. And then you would essentially use that to... Or, yeah, that is used to limit the amount of... I guess what you have access to. Best way I can put it. No, that's not the best way I put it. it. It would keep you from accessing too much too quickly and force you to dedicate construction resources to, well, building what you need. Whereas this game, you know how they limit that? They force research times. You have to research a certain, you have to research and upgrade everything to a point to advance. And yes, this is actually, a, in some ways, it is a good way to keep players from abusing the hell out of, well, everything, honestly. Structure under attack. Oh, give me a break. Run. Great. Uh, I forgot the scavengers got access to air support eventually. Alright. There we go. Okay. Anywho, as I was saying, you, you basically put research at times, which, again, is another, I guess, weakness? I guess the best way I can put it? Because you have to, obviously, you have to balance out your research. Oh, look. Yeah, this is just this is just great. I, lo I love this. I love it. <laughs> you can hear my enthusiasm, right, folks? Yeah, I guess the only way I'm gonna get access to more AI is to start researching artillery, or not artillery. Um. They shoot that down? Okay, cool. Come on. Oh, they just run out of ammo. They might have run out of ammo. Anyway, so, again, you have to limit them somehow. You have to limit the players somehow. And, again, one of the best ways to do that, obviously, is, well, research times. You have to upgrade everything up to past a certain point, which also eliminate, gets a bit of the, illustrates some of the downsides. You have, again, you have to find a way to limit the players ability to rapidly gain these hyper advanced technologies which in some ways actually makes it, it can make for a tedious game because in order to get access to even half of what i'm getting right here i have to literally as you can see research probably spend a good 10 15 minutes researching 
a certain level of tech tree in order to straight up find or get to a certain piece of technology. I want better cannons, okay. Or I want artillery, okay. I have to research cannons to a certain degree. Okay, goody. Oh shit, I forgot about that. Well, that's another thing. You have technologies that are rendered obsolete after certain advances. Which is actually kind of aggravating because when I have a standby that I've been using, That standby suddenly gets knocked out. Yeah, that's another thing you gotta worry about is obsolete tech. Certain pieces of technology just can be rendered redundant and obsolete, so you have to carefully balance that. Yeah, balancing. That's a good that's actually a good re I can actually one of the main reasons I can think of. That's more shit to balance. You have to balance out technology, you gotta balance out your research tree, research times. And it can be a bit clunky because let's say you get a new piece of technology and then you have to essentially build up or I should say not build up. No, yes. You have to basically go through and design, not build up, design the individual unit that's this new advance in technology before you can actually use it. Which actually could slow down action, especially in a multiplayer game. Especially, even though, yes, you while you do indeed have the ability to design what you need, obviously. Thank you, thank you. Let's go. Oh, I've lost my train of thought. Okay, yeah, fight by design. So, yeah, um... And, you know, the more I'm talking about this, the more I'm starting to understand why you don't see this in video games very often. Because, it, outside of turn-based strategy, it makes... It can make for a very clunky experience. Oh, look. You know I'm almost willing to bet there's that, ba there's that base down here. I feel the sudden urge to go full-on Rambo on it. Anyhow. Let's go, boys. Get him. Get him. Okay. Anyways. Yeah, you got to balance out how your units work, how they fight. I don't even know what those are. Come on. Let's go. Push in. Push in. <laughs> I gotta admit, this is actually very satisfying. But yeah, I'm starting to think the reason why you don't see more fight by design mechanics is just because of the sheer complexity of having to balance this all out. You have to find a way to balance out your weapons. You gotta figure out how to keep the players from getting too much technology. You gotta balance out each and every piece, or each and every scrap of hardware. Obviously. You gotta figure out how to keep them from getting too... How to keep players from getting too much too quickly, or... But at the same time, you got to make sure they don't... It doesn't take 30 minutes to reach the top of the tech tree. Here's the thing. If you know what you're doing, if I recall correctly, they might have changed it in the recent updates. I honestly haven't looked at the patch notes for any of the recent versions of uh, Warzone 2100s. You can actually get, get laser weapons and the like fairly quickly, if I recall. It really doesn't take much. And that... You used to, mind you. I don't know if it's the case now. But you used to get be able to get... Um, machine guns relatively... Or not machine guns, laser weapons and the like relatively quickly. And it was pretty damn scary now that I think about it. Oh, look. More obsolete tech. I mean, you have the option to use obsolete tech if you really wanted to. All right, we're gonna call that the Century Three. Save it. And well, that's another thing you have to figure out. How do you? But how do you decide you, a weapon's obsolete? I'll give you an example. In previous versions of Warzone Twenty One Hundred, the standard machine gun that you see here, just a basic bitch. Standard machine gun 
It was the standard machine gun, the light machine gun, the heavy machine gun. Those were never considered obsolete. Each one had its own strengths and weaknesses. The light machine gun, or the standard machine gun, fired faster than the twin machine gun. The twin machine gun could put out double the damage, though. The HMG was essentially the big brother of these two. It was more expensive to produce. It hit harder and offered more hit points. But it was never quite, I guess... It wasn't quite what you would consider obsolete. It, each of these weapons had their uses. One was cheaper. One was more potent. Or one had double the firepower. And one could just straight up fuck your shit up. You know, I'm talk, looking back on it now, there was probably more than a few issues with the... Now I'm thinking about it, there's probably more than a few issues, which might be... Or explain why they would render certain weapons obsolete. But when you would get... it wouldn't Your weapons would not be rendered obsolete till you hit the rotary machine gun. Which are not rotary machine gun, the assault gun, which is basically your rotary machine gun. All right, what do we got? Cool. I should probably start using more artillery, huh? Anyways. But yeah. These weapons weren't really rendered obsolete until you essentially... Ooh, ouch. Until you essentially, like, reach the top tier of these weapons. Like, look here. That right there, the hypervelocity cannon, if I recall correctly, actually renders, at least in this version, the light cannon obsolete. Although, light cannon was almost never obsolete up until this point, but I don't know. Oh, hey, look. Let's got that problem. Alright, hack up your knickers, boys. Let's go get them. <laughs> And I guess that's one way to look at it. There, there is a lot of balancing troubles with the weapons. How do you decide what's obsolete? Do you have an automated process, or do you let your players use obsolete tech, even though a oh, super hot flamer gel that'll render it obsolete? Do you? What, what's the mechanic? Do you have it automatically just swap out, hot swap whatever's obsolete, or? You let your players know that this technology is obsolete, but you want to use it anyway. Just, there's a whole bunch of stuff. And then, again, you have to balance your research. How much research is it going to take to reach X object? Do you make it too long? Do you make it too short? It's, there's all these factors. And how do you make a weapon? How do you determine how effective a weapon is? Because, obviously, certain weapons are going to be more effective against certain targets. And, again, there's the process of design itself. If a player has a design specifically saved away, they can... Essentially, for a player that's new and has never played this game, they would have a leg up on them. I, you know, the more... Again, the more I talk, the more I'm starting to realize why this mechanic isn't used anymore. But it is such a cool mechanic. We need more fight-by-design games. Of course, it also used to be that Warzone 2100 only had a... Because now it's a unit limit of 200. Again, unless that's changed, you used to only be able to build 20 units, like 20 combat vehicles, if I recall correctly. Again, I've been wrong before. Major research completed. Unit under attack. Oh, hey, look. I did it. A Kadata loader. Unit under attack. Okay. And they can't do anything because we're trying to but we're trying to bunker bust that base and we just can't do it. Oh, hey, Lancer AT rockets, those are coming handy. Hmm. Another tank. Oh, I just. I don't know anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, drain of thoughts lost me again. Oh yeah, I was talking about the fight by design. But yeah, I, I again, I would love to see more fight by design mechanic games. More, just more of all this. I want to be able to build my own shit and literally be able to fight the enemy how I want to fight them. 
because oh there's another there's another thing that I'm, that I'm thinking of right now you lose faction distinctiveness is x faction different from y faction sure one fa side might use more artillery which could distinguish them while one side might favor flame weaponry or maybe they favor machine guns or dedicated anti-infantry hunters which as you can't design your own infantry you have to basically as you research and unlock new weapons you'll gain access to cyborgs are new types of cyborgs, which are the standard infantry units of the setting. Oh, look, chain gun upgrade. That means I can basically build the... You get that right there? That's your minigun. That's your, that's your minigun right there. Alright, I'll get those all repaired, and then we'll make, take another crack at the base. It's only taking me three separate assaults to actually, you know, crack that base completely. <laughs> Whoops. Anywho. Oh, look, they're coming back for round two. As well, a couple machine gun sideboards. But yeah, essentially, you're going to have to really, when you're integrating a mechanic like this, you're going to, there's all kinds of factors you have to consider. Again, lack of faction distinctiveness because with everyone having access to the same technologies. Now, granted, you could technically. This is a big damn technically. Build factions to be distinctive, but then you run into a whole other can of worms. How do you ba balance X factions' weapon against Y factions' weapons and armor? Th there's all kinds of stuff again. Again, look back to Metal Fatigue. Metal Fatigue is a good example of this. Each faction, yes, is a bit is distinctive, but they generally have their own shtick. I can't remember all their. I can't remember their. For fuck's sake, I can't remember all their fa all the factions off the top of my head. But you basically had a middle of the road faction, a power faction, and a faction that utilized advanced technologies. And it really showed one faction favored high end technologies and stealth, whereas the other faction favored brute force and heavy armor. And then the third faction favored a middle of the road approach, a good combination of speed, weapons, and armor. And it worked. It did work. Even their vehicles were distinct enough. And that's actually kind of interesting. Oh, bombard. And flat, cyclone flat cannon. What y'all doing? Come on. They're on the base. We're almost done here. There we go. <laughs> Gotta love the uh, technicals. All right. Rapid fire chain gun. Yeah, that's right. Need that for your minigun. Oh, well, you're all dealing with that. I'm gonna build a bunker. Oh, and waste your time clearing me out. Come on. Now look at this. We're, we're getting heroes. We're getting all kinds of neat stuff. Oh. Oh, let's get them out of there before they get any more tore up. Come on. Clear them out. Hmm. Anywho, yeah. How do you balance... Again, Metal Fatigue, while it did do the whole fight by design thing and kept things distinctive, and they did, and did it well enough that you could actually tell what the differences were between each faction, a lot of times, if you give access to the same technology, you have to figure out, again, how to balance X weapon against Y weapon, or so on and so forth. It's... It strikes me as just this complete and utter headache. Oh, hey. I completely forgot I had a, had a heavy tank design saved with hypervelocity. the hell I do that? Oh wait, I don't have anti-air batteries yet. Well, son of a bitch. Uh. Yeah, the hypervelocity cannon renders your light cannon completely redundant. <laughs> now, I don't necessarily agree with that. I mean, again, light cannon is actually one of my favorite weapons because it's it just works so damn well. 
It may be cheap, it may not be the most effective weapon, but goddamn does it work. It does what it's supposed to. It shoots, it kills. It blows the hell out of everything, anything and everything that it runs into. And you gotta respect that. Like, you, you really do. Now, you are getting really annoying. Know that? Oh, that makes me smile. Alright. Let's go ahead and get some the Sunburst battery researched. Until then, we're going to get some emergency AA work in. Uh, I guess what I'm... Yeah, again, I guess what I'm, uh, what I'm trying to say is... Let's see more of this. I know it's a bit clunky. I know it might slow the game pace down. And I know it may not be competitive enough for some people. Uh, yes, I'm sure there's folks out there that would be, act like that. It's like, oh, it's not competitive enough for us. In the whole... Oh, yeah. Fuck. Oh, hey. Oh, I guess the uh, scavengers took him out. Well, shit. Now, let's go ahead and wipe these scavenger punks out. Anyways. I guess for some people it's not going to be competitive enough. But... And you know, it's fully understandable. This, this Something like this wouldn't be for everyone. But I genuinely think that if given a chance, this would be a game or a type of or a genre, game genre that would be a genuinely... Good thing for the community, I guess. Best way is what I'm trying to say. I think it would actually offer a... a Brand new RTS experience for people. That's what I'm going for. I think Fight by Design would be a very an interesting art mechanic to implement in future RTSs because it would offer an experience that you generally wouldn't normally get. And then somebody would find a way to turn it into microtransactions. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm a freaking pessimist. Come on, what are you what are you standing around there for? Get to work. Hmm? Well that got their attention. That's cool. Just watch all the missiles fly. I said I do believe that fight by design would definitely be a very interesting mechanic to have just because it would sort of shake up so much of the current day now I'm not saying RTSs aren't good and I'm not sure if other RTSs implemented this outside of mental fatigue if it has just let me know but again I really believe this would be a good a really good mechanic to implement in future RTSs and if somebody wants to give it a shot Go for it. Go for it, I say. Just go nuts. Make it work. Have fun. Go nuts. Oh, hey, look. What are y'all sitting around for? Get in there and start shooting down aircraft. Uh, that got their attention. Unit under attack. I realized I didn't have any trucks left. Holy shit. Uh, okay, anyways. Like I said, this is going to be a rambly video. And honestly, I've... Again, I've had fun. But yeah, I do, I do believe that Fight by Design should be implemented. I really do. Just because, again, it would give so much more to the RTS genre, and if you wanted to make distinct factions, yes, you'd have to balance X Faction's weapon against X Faction's armor, and all that, it would be such a pain in the ass to fully implement. 
But again, I do believe it would be well worth it. Anyways, I've been your host, Farsi. I do appreciate you sticking around and listening to me ramble, go off topic, and everything else. Anyways, nerding out over. See you all in the next finest of mediocre productions. Peace out.